So today we're going to show you how to reduce uh, stuttering in your games. So if you have a look on the top left hand corner of your screen there, you'll see that I've got a, a bunch of numbers there. It might look a little bit convoluted because I've got all my CPU threads listed there as well. But we are actually just going to focus on the frame time graph and the frames per second for this one. So if we have a look here, uh, we are getting about 100 frames per second, but that frame time graph is actually a little bit all over the place. You can see that it's not very smooth. And in the famous words of Steve, slower is better, but more consistent is best. We are going to try and improve the frame time graph there. So we are not going to uh, get higher frames per second by using this method, but we are going to improve your, your gameplay experience quite a bit. I mean, uh, stuttering can be quite uh, jarring, especially if you play Spider-Man, you go from 120 frames per second on top of the buildings here down to 60 frames per second when you're at street level. And I mean, it's definitely not uh, not ideal and definitely noticeable. So the tool we are going to use for this is a MSI Afterburner alongside Riva Tuner Statistics Server. So I'll link this uh, download in the description below. You can just go to uh, techspot.com there's a MSI Afterburner download, yeah? So we can just click that. It'll take you to the next page and the download should start automatically. Right, so uh, once we have the download, you can just go ahead and install it. So I'm not going to go through the whole installation process because I've got it already installed, but you can just click accept. And at this screen, just make sure that your Riva Tuner Statistics server is ticked. You can just click next and uh, finish and it'll install. Right, so once you have that installed, you can just open up MSI Afterburner. Just make sure that the Riva Tuner Statistics Server is also running. It should start up automatically with the Afterburner, but uh, yeah, just make sure that it is running because you'll need that. Now, sorry guys, I didn't realize that my webcam was uh, in the way. So to see whether RTSS is running, you can just uh, click here and this is the icon for RTSS. So once you click it, it'll bring up Riva Tuner Statistics Server. And this is where we set all the frame rate limits. Right, so now that we've got a MSI Afterburner, we are going to go into settings here and we are going to go to monitoring. So there's quite a few items that you can monitor here, but we are going to scroll all the way down towards the frame time and frame rate settings. So for my video, I'm just, uh, I've got the frame time graph, well, the frame rate and the frame time graph. You can see that it is set to use a graph instead of text. So what you can do is you can just uh, make sure that your frame rate is ticked. You can just uh, tick it there and make sure that it is ticked to show in on-screen display. This can be left as text, no problem with that. You can also then tick your frame time graph just to make sure that uh, whatever you're doing is actually improving your, your frame times. Right, and then next we're going to go to on-screen display. So here at toggle on-screen display, you're just going to assign a key combo or just a single button, doesn't matter. I've got alt and uh, backslash for that. So that way I can just uh, very easily bring up the on-screen display and hide it. All right, so once that is uh, set up, we can go back into our game here. All right, so we're back in our game and I'm just gonna press uh, Alt and Backslash and you'll see that it brings up the on-screen display. So if you noticed, uh, I've got uh, this running on an RTX uh, 3080. The frames per second is uh, quite low, but that's because I'm uh, recording on this uh, system as well. I mean, the power usage there, you can see that it's uh, hovering around 260 watt. It's usually around 360 watt. Uh, OBS uh, reduces the frame rate by quite a bit, but that's also because I've got uh, LUTs and uh, background removal and uh, and webcams, etc. So anyway, all of that out of the way, what you want to do is you want to move around, play around a bit and try and determine your average minimum FPS, right? So you can see here that we are getting, we're staying above uh, 60. Um, it is quite uh, up and down. I mean, there we are getting in the 90s and then down here we are getting back into the 60s again, right? So it's uh, up and down and that frame time graph is reflecting that. So what you want to do is we can we can basically see that if I cap my frames per second to 60 frames per second, 
Uh, we have no problem keeping above that, so that's where I'm going to set it at. So you can just go into RTS Asia, Rivachina Statistic Server, and here you can set a frame rate limit. All right, so I'm going to just uh, type in 60 there and press enter. And once you press enter, it's actually applied. This is under the global preset. You can actually add different uh, applications here. So for instance, if we just wanted to use uh, Spider-Man, we'll just go into Steam, Steam Apps, Common, and we'll select the Spider-Man EXE file. Right, so then if we open that, all the settings we apply here will only apply to this executable file. So if we do that, we press 0 and enter, and we press, we type in 60 here and enter. Now if we go back to Spider-Man, our frame rate should be kept at 60 frames per second. Right, so that is working. And as you can see, the frame time graph is smooth as butter. Not sure why people say that, uh, but it's not particularly smooth, but there you go. We are getting a constant uh, 60 frames per second and the frame time graph is a pretty, pretty smooth. Now, I do understand that uh, people running a higher end hardware might not necessarily like their uh, experience to be kept at 60 frames per second, but in my personal opinion, it is definitely a lot better to have a smoother experience than a faster, more erratic experience. Now this method works on uh, most games if you can uh, keep above the frame rate limit that you set. I just want to show you that there are other types of uh, stutters as well and uh, one of them is actually Vulkan related. So I'm gonna boot up uh, Quake 2 RTX here and I just want to show you what I'm actually talking about. So it took me quite a, quite a while to figure this one out. So if you have a look at uh, the frame time graph here it looks like a heartbeat right um we are getting at uh, 50 frames per second this is uh, definitely not indicative of the normal gameplay that i usually get um or the frame time frame rate that i usually get i get about uh, 90 frames per second in this game so this is just a testament to obs being quite uh, resource intensive but the main concern here is that frame time graph so you can see that it's uh, doing, uh, it's uh, going between 8 milliseconds and 18 milliseconds, and that just ruins the experience. I'm not actually sure if you'll be able to pick it up on YouTube due to the compression, etc. That's why I've got that uh, frame time graph there. But I want to show you that this is actually caused by a G Sync issue. Right, so I've got a Dell 32 inch uh, 1440p monitor and it's uh, it's free sync compatible but it's not really g-sync compatible but nvidia's control panel actually picks it up as a g-sync panel so you can actually apply the same method we just used on spider-man uh, so we can we can go ahead and cap the frames per second to 50. so we can just go back into rts asia uh, there we go i'm just going to change the global settings here so 50 and press enter and we go back there right so the frame time graph is definitely looking a lot better right it's still not perfect but it's definitely a lot better uh, the reason why it's not uh, it's not completely flat is because we are dropping below that uh, 50 frames per second limit that we said so let's go ahead and just set a 45 frames per second limit Right, so you go back, 45, and now this should be quite smooth. All right, so now it's uh, pretty flat. All right, so my OBS actually just crashed. I don't know, I'm having quite a lot of issues with the newer version of OBS. So I might just uh, roll back. And I also removed the frame rate limit. So you can see that that uh, heartbeat is back. So I just want to show you that once we actually just go into a video and we enable a vsync let me just get rid of that uh, gpu profiler right and once uh, vsync is enabled the heartbeat frame rate or heartbeat uh, frame time consistency is actually gone now it's uh, it's pretty strange because 
This is a 165 hertz monitor, so VSync does nothing here. Uh, VSync actually just uh, limits your frame rate to your monitor's refresh rate, so it doesn't go any higher, so it prevents tearing. Uh, there's a lot of other things that uh, VSync does, but uh, I find it pretty strange that enabling VSync especially in this title, just uh, solves that uh, major stuttering. This is also not the only title that I'm seeing this issue on, uh, No Man's Sky, which also runs uh, on the Vulkan API, has this exact same issue. So there's two ways I can actually resolve this issue. Uh, the one is by enabling VSync, and the other is it's actually going into my desktop here. I'll just uh, show you. We go into NVIDIA control panel if my OBS doesn't crash again. Wow, that's quite bright. So once I actually enable G-Sync here, then that uh, stuttering goes away as well. Right, so let's go back into Quake. My uh, OBS did actually crash just as I went back into Quake. Right, and you can see that uh, the heartbeat frame time consistency or the heartbeat frame times are actually gone. I mean, it's not a very good experience this. As I said, I usually get around uh, 85, 90 frames per second. But uh, this is just a very good demo of uh, how to improve your frame time consistency. So there are other methods of uh, limiting the frame rate. You can do it in game or you can do it via your graphics card control panel, uh, Radeon Adrenaline software or NVIDIA control panel. But uh, I found that uh, sometimes it uh, actually introduces quite a little bit of uh, input lag. Whereas with the uh, Riva Tuna statistics server, I do not uh, really experience any additional input lag. So that's, uh, that's the main reason why I prefer to use uh, RTSS. Um, you can play around and see which one works uh, best for you. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, a Radeon card to test with to show you exactly where to set the settings, but I can show you how to enable this in uh, NVIDIA control panel. So you can just go into manage uh, 3D settings and over here there should be a max frame rate. All right, so yeah, you can just select on and you can select the, uh, the number there or you can do it on a per program level. You can do it the same as uh, with the RTSS. You can just add the executable here and you've got uh, different settings and then you can enable the max frame rate. All right, and that's it for this video. Hope you learned something. Hope you found this useful. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, hope to see you guys on the next one.